I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have James Key, founder of Autonomy Network. James, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Hey, yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Looking forward You're to it. You're welcome. Let's dive into all things blockchain, automation, decentralized exchanges. Uh, how can we make Web3 easier to use and just less hassle through, through automation. I know your team's working on some pretty cool initiatives in this part of a blockchain, and I'd love to dive into that. So let's start with, you know, from yourself, uh, an overview of the solutions that you and your team at Autonomy are working on, and then we'll dive into the details. Perfect, sounds good. All right, go for it. Yeah, so uh, Autonomy Network is essentially a decentralized automation protocol. Uh, so we're infrastructure kind of like Chainlink, but not for uh, oracles or anything. It's for automation. So it's a, a ready and ready made off the shelf solution for Web3 developers to add features to DEX to to DApps. Um, for example, like limit orders and stop losses on DEXs, uh, recurring payments for DAOs, NFTs that mm -hmm. like transfer themselves, um, much more engagement thing, things like that. Amazing, and yeah, I think this is really needed. Obviously, DEXs. It's super important because right now it seems like they're pretty limited in that you can only do you know, spot orders or buying at the market price, uh, which is crazy um, to not have automation in, in decentralized exchanges to be able to set an order to buy at a lower price. Um, but otherwise, I feel like payments in general, you know, having, uh, for example, you know, pre-authorized debits and credits in, in traditional finance where people are pulling funds from your account, that's, that's not possible. In, in, in cryptocurrency um, and other automation functions. Um, maybe you can talk about, there, there's so many different ways to automate in, in blockchain. What are the main focuses that you're focused on right now? Uh, it was, um, we were definitely like very DeFi focused uh, initially, like the, the limit orders and stop losses, um, mainly just because, you know, trading for better or for worse is, uh, you know, the, the largest kind of market in, in crypto. And so it's, you know, the highest value, high, highest frequency uh, use case. And, you know, especially after like DeFi summer um, happened and we just saw like DEXs like exploding. That, that's when I um, like really started to actually like work on uh, this idea initially. And so it's, it's kind of from the um, like a very clear, you know, demand of, uh, of DeFi users for this thing, even not just like trading, but also like automatically liquidating yourself if you're borrowing before you get liquidated by someone else and so you avoid paying the fee um so you kind of essentially make uh, borrowing cheaper that in that way uh but now we're kind of sort of expanding on the use cases and and like we'll always be you know like quite DeFi heavy um but uh, we're expanding into all these cases like gaming and so i mentioned these like npc uh, these nfts that transfer themselves and so we we call them uh, anfts autonomous nfts mm -hmm. and so we're about to launch a game um the public test net will be within a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, the signups for, for um, our NFT droppers uh, as part of that is uh, already live. So yeah, wow. check it out. Very cool. And you know, you, you're speaking about uh, focused on DeFi since DeFi summer and in decentralized exchanges. With this automation, is that already live? Like for example, could Uniswap implement this right now or have other decentralized exchanges already implemented uh, Autonomy's technology? Yeah, exactly. Um, we we have our own UI autoswap.trade that's live on a few different um, a few different chains like uh, BSC, AVEX, etc. Uh, but yeah, we have some partnership uh, partner integrations like with uh, ApeSwap, uh, SokuSwap, um, a few more that uh, are a lot bigger that I, I can't quite uh, reveal yet, but I'm super, super excited for those. Uh, we're deploying onto to, non-EVM chains as well. Uh, so that's really exciting, um, but yeah, it's uh, there's, there's plenty of stuff like live that people can use like right today. Very cool, and I guess this kind of technology, although it's super important, I feel like it's very back end and obviously developer heavy. Where you know people that uh, are are just doing the trading, they don't really think about you know this kind of automation. They they just go to the decks and they see oh they they've implemented. Uh, like this new kind of technology that helps. I don't really need to know necessarily how it works as long as I can trust that it's safe and secure and, and, and you know, secure with my funds. Is that right? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. It, it was like very intentional um, that we kind of abstracted all this away and like the user shouldn't even need to know that they're using autonomy or an automation protocol or anything. They just go to like 
say if Uniswap integrated us uh, and to add limits and stops, um, they would just go and like click limit and it would, you know, ha like the, the UX would be essentially the same as a centralized exchange. And so they don't need to learn anything new. They don't need to change their behaviors or anything like that. Um, they just, uh, they can just get access to, to a new feature, which is awesome. Very cool. And uh, is Meta Dungeon, is that the, the game that you guys are working on? I was reading about, maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, for sure. So this is the um, the kind of implementation of the these uh, self transferring NFTs, these ANFTs, autonomous NFTs that uh, that I was mentioning about earlier. It's kind of a, a demonstration of the use case, um, rather than just kind of like putting it out into the world and just kind of expecting people to build their own games. I think it, it was better to kind of show what what can be done. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's essentially a game with like two sets of NFTs, like heroes, which are the, like player NFTs that you know you need to own one of these in order to play. And then there's the bosses in the game, these ANFTs, like these autonomous NFTs. Mm. And so the bosses transfer themselves to the wallets of, uh, of whoever owns you know various heroes, like randomly. Um, current, currently, we have it set to like every day, it'll it'll transfer itself. And so uh, when it's in your wallet, you're able to, to fight the boss. Uh, there are a few different bosses that we're, we're working with other crypto projects. Uh, I can't name who yet, um, but they will be like branded bosses of these projects. And you'll be able to use those NFTs of those other projects in the game as like power ups uh, for helping you defeat these, uh, these like each, each boss in particular. And so um, we uh, all the money from the mint that we're actually not making a penny from this it's all going to adding to these like prize pools um over time for for each boss uh, and so uh, like even without our inputs of this uh, of this money for the prize pools um when players are, are playing like uh there are various ways in which you can get an extra advantage by spending various nfts from you know external projects mm -hmm. um Sometimes you have to spend them. Sometimes you just have to hold them in your wallet and they don't get spent. But in the cases where you do have to spend them, uh, if you lose against the boss, uh, the NFT is, is taken by the boss kind of permanently. And so the next player, if they win, they get all the NFTs and tokens that the boss holds. And so it's kind of this like um, a new take on play to earn gaming that's actually kind of sustainable self-funding. It's not coming from token inflation um, because like uh, it's, it's kind of zero sum if it was only coming from other players, but in addition, um, or items that are minted from the boss itself. Um, so in that sense, it's like the first ever like positive sum kind of play to earn game model that, that there's been. Very cool. Yeah, I think uh, as GameFi continues to grow, just reworking and tweaking the the economics of, of minting and the way that the uh, just the NFTs function inside of the game, I think is just going to continue to improve. And, and you mentioned there about the minting. I'm curious if to mint the heroes or to get the NFTs, um, do you just start playing the game or is there like an initial mint where uh, people are contributing and, and how does that work? Yeah, so we are essentially just have, um, we'll do a kind of like a rolling drop of, uh, like initially, we'll, we haven't decided exactly how many yet, but around one to 2,000 heroes. And so like some time later, a couple of weeks-ish, uh, we'll do like another 1,000 um, up to a limit. Uh, of course, I'm not just going to inflate forever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the, they're essentially just going to be like, uh, it, it's just going to be a random whitelist based on um, the, the sign up. So uh, we, we may do some like campaigns, like, you know, you got to follow and blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. there's no... Um, like we want to do this in a pretty kind of fair, random way. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. And with the autonomous NFTs, I'm curious, did you guys have to make a new uh, ERC kind of protocol or is it just back on regular NFTs? And how do you add that functionality in? Yeah, so it's, it's inter interesting because um, kind of the, like, what is an NFT? I mean, you can argue that it's, exactly the code that uh, open zeppelin which you know basically everyone just like copies for uh, from uh, that's the nft or if you're looking at the actual erc um the actual kind of uh definition of the standard it's essentially just an interface and so it just specifies okay you have to have these functions you know like transfer um etc uh and who owns this this id etc um but it doesn't specify exactly how those are implemented and so uh, this this new type of NFT, these ANFTs, are they they conform to this standard, this interface. Um, but the implementation is such that 
it uses autonomy on the back end to uh, to do things under various conditions, like you know, every day randomly transfer itself to someone from this this uh, set of wallets, etc. And so, mm -hmm. like it, it is an NFT. It's a modified NFT. It's it's a bit of a blurry line of exactly uh, what it is, but um, mm -hmm. I guess that's the the nature of uh, doing something new, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. And and I'm curious if you have a bigger picture for you know these types of NFTs because I feel like. It could have use cases in, in a lot of industries, you know, and gaming is a great first use case and a great way to bring adoption quickly. Uh, but I feel like these NFT functionalities could could help in a lot of industries. Do you foresee this becoming something bigger down the road? Yes, I actually have like a, a very lengthy, uh, admittedly, like seven part blog series on the on blog.autonomynetwork.io. I mean, there's there's the kind of like really kind of crazy far into the future stuff where once it's possible to um, to run AI on a blockchain, obviously like the, the computational capacity of blockchains is like nowhere near enough uh, today in order to do that. But the, the interesting thing is that um, with, with a system like this, because the, the automation is decentralized, um, like, you know, if, if we wanted to, we couldn't turn it off, well, uh, you know, once we've kind of completely rem removed ourselves from participating in the system. Um, I think the uh, one of these super cool use cases is that, well, I don't know if you call it uh, slightly terrifying, but essentially th these things are kind of alive in the sense that they don't rely on anyone in order to do things. And so if you have like an AI, not just like a, a smart contract that just transfers itself to someone, if, if you have actual, you know, even minor intelligence, you know, the these bots or these contracts um, can autonomously figure out like how to make money through like arbitraging on decentralized exchanges or doing like all, all these various things. They can self-replicate. They can mutate intentionally every time they uh, self-replicate. And so you end up, it's, it's almost like a new form of life in the sense that um, if you kind of, I'm not going to go through every uh, definition. It's, it's in the blog post if you want to read it. But, you know, there's like seven generally accepted um, conditions for life. And I, I believe that these systems um, essentially take all, all of those boxes. So anyway, the, I don't know if I actually answered your question for a use case, but uh, this is like a, a very, it's very far into the future, but I, I think it's super interesting stuff that's gonna maybe slightly terrifying, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, we will find out. And you know, I feel I keep getting flashbacks to Elon Musk talking about how you know AI can be dangerous and it can be used for good, but it can also uh, be used for evil. And, and we'll see what happens when AI has a mind of its own and, and which path it will choose. Um, so let's start as the first use case with, you know, fun little games. And, um, and, and with the game, I'm curious, uh, a lot of these games, you know, they come out and there's a lot of hype and then it go and the traction goes up, but then the retention goes down and it's like, how do you keep people coming back and have it as a game that's popular, you know, year for years to come? Do you have any insight on, on how you're going to keep people retained uh, and interested in the game? Yeah, um, just uh, finished by the Elon Musk thing. I, I completely agree. And the, the scary thing is that um, this technology is the thing that enables that kind of scary AI to not be able to be turned off. Uh, but um, yeah, to, to, to answer your question about the, um, uh, the kind of long-term strategy, um, I mean, it. The, so there's kind of like two long-term strategies, like the metagenary one, the kind of autonomy one. The autonomy one is that you know we we want people to like fork this game uh, and you know like improve it and uh, build on it um, because like we're we're not like a, a game a gaming studio, right? We are you know hardcore de developers, and um, uh, I'm sure people can make better games than us, like for sure. Uh, and so, like, we want people to to fork it because you know it'll, they'll use autonomy on the back end, etc. Um, but from the meta dungeon side, like we, you know, we still want to have like a, a flagship kind of um, user facing like product, just kind of strategically. And so, our, yeah, we we definitely do have a strategy. It's essentially like we um, over time will just be adding more bosses. And like the the thing is with the incentivization that I mentioned, that it's um, like a very sustainable like play to earn model. It doesn't rely on on inflating the token to infinity, kind of the way that like Axie Infinity does, mm -hmm. um, and so you know th nothing like this has been tried before. So I suppose we still have to like prove that this is the case, but um, that you know theoretically that's that's at least the plan to where the incentivization is sustainable, 
and in order for in, to keep engagement, um, I mean, like, that's why we're adding like these. Uh, I, I didn't really mention it, but this is like the first ever team play uh, crypto game. You'll be able to like team up with people um, in order to defeat these um, the, these bosses. Uh, but also just like keep adding new bosses where you know like boss number one drops something the boss number three you know you need it to in order to defeat it uh, keep like partnering with like more nft projects i mean there's there's plenty of nft projects and uh the more every week that uh, we we can there's definitely a possibility to just keep partnering with um more kind of uh, uh you know uh, more brands nft brands um in order to to keep the the pace up of, of adding new content and so, yeah, it's basically like very sustainable incentivization and just like a, a very clear path for like adding more content and complexity into the game. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I'm looking forward to seeing how the autonomy technology, you know, moves through Meta Dungeon and then in, into other forks and, and hopefully AI doesn't take over the world from your project, uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, so uh, with that said, in the near term future here, you mentioned the, the, the upcoming release of the game and the minting. What is the best way for people to learn more and to get involved in Meta Dungeon? Yeah, just follow us on Twitter at Autonomy Network. Um, I'd say that's the, the best place. Also, our Discord. Sometimes we, we drop Alpha in the Discord that's not on the, on the Twitter. So, um, but yeah, I mean, everything like eventually gets posted through the Twitter. Um, we'll be, like I mentioned, releasing um, the, the public beta within a couple months. And yeah. Would love okay. to have people in involvement playing it, suggesting how to improve it, and uh, yeah. Sounds great, James. Thanks so much for taking the time to discuss all of this. I'm really fascinated with Autonomy's technology, looking forward to the release of the game. All the best with the release and everything else moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Perfect. Thanks, Ashton. Have a good one.